In this specific video, I'm going to show you how to use the related post plugin to help visitors find related content. So what you need to do is log into your WordPress dashboard, go under plugins, click on add new and do a search for a specific related post plugin called the contextual related posts, click search plugins. We're going to go ahead and install that plugin. And this is the plugin here. So we're going to go through the installation process. So click on install now, click OK, enter your FTP username and password, click proceed and click on activate. The settings for the related posts is going to be under settings, related posts. And here we go. I'm going to walk you step by step through the general options so you can set everything up and then you'll be good to go. So under the general options, this basically displays the related number of posts. So do you want a maximum of five or do you want a maximum of 10? Whatever number that you want. In this case, we're going to leave it at six. Related posts should be newer than a certain amount of days. This is customizable as well. You can do it as it is now, or you can put 2000 days, whatever. If you want to make sure that the content is fresh, you could do something as 365 days. So it's really up to you. But I think because if your content is really good and it's not outdated, then I would not necessarily put a certain time limit. If your posts are related, let's say, for example, to the news and you want to keep everything up to date, then you can change that. The post types just allow certain post types like posts, pages, and attachments. In this case, I'm going to leave it at post and page. It's really up to you. And you can find related posts based on content as well as the title. Or if you uncheck this, then it'll find related posts only related to the titles. In this case, I'm going to leave it unchecked simply because the posts on the pages that I'm creating will not have any content for examples. You can also list the post or page IDs to exclude from the results. And the way you figure out the post or page ID is simply by going to a post, say for example, posts, click on all posts. And if you click that specific post or page, you're going to see post equals a certain number. That right there is your post page ID. You can also exclude categories from the results. So in this case, simply enter the category name and that's it. You can also set it where you can add related posts to posts, pages, homepage, feeds, category archives, and this just gives you the ability to show wherever the posts are going to appear. In this case, I'm going to put posts and pages, click save options, and we'll move to the second tab. The second tab is the output options, basically how it's going to look. So you can change the title of the related posts if you want to. or leave it as it is. When there are no posts, you can either put a blank output or display no related posts. Now, while this is an option, I would recommend that you put a blank output simply because you don't want people to think, oh, this person doesn't really have a lot of content or you know, who knows what could go in the mind of somebody if they saw no related posts. It, to me, it's kind of like seeing the uh, 
this site is under construction kind of post. So that's just how I see it. So it's really up to you whether you have a blank output or displaying a specific message. You could have it display a different message if you want it to uh, have that. You can also show the post excerpt in the list. If you check that, it's going to grab the excerpt and put it in the list. I'm a big believer in keeping it simple. I'm going to leave that unchecked. That way they can just see the titles and click on it if it captures their interest. That way they are not overwhelmed with too much information or too much keywords in that list. You can have the length of the excerpt, but if that's unchecked, that doesn't really matter. You can limit the t post title length if you want to do that. I normally leave it at 100 because I'd like to show the full title, but that's just me. And then this option here basically opens the links in a new window. I'm going to leave it as it is because I want people to stay within my site and not be distracted. You can add a no follow attribute to the links in the list. And you can exclude display related posts on specific posts or pages. So use the same method I showed you earlier. If you want to know the post or page ID, simply click on the post or page and you'll find the ID and enter that here. And this stuff is just for, you know, lists, unordered lists and things like that. I'm going to leave it as it is. These are post thumbnail options. Basically, you can set it where each of those related posts are going to have like some sort of thumbnail next to every one of those. Now, it depends on your audience and who they are. If they are very, very graphics oriented, that might appeal to them. But for the most case, I'm going to leave it do not display thumbnails. You can customize your thumbnails, the width, the height. You can use Tim Thumb by checking that. You can enter the quality of the thumbnails that way, because if you have too many images, it can actually slow down your site. So you can enter the quality here. And we have the post thumbnail meta field, which enables you to customize that within your post. And you got other information about thumbnails. Click save options when you're done. And feed options are basically related to your WordPress feed. So you can customize these feed options if you want to do that, displaying a certain amount, thumbnails if you want to use thumbnails. And we're not going to leave that blank. We're going to leave that as it is custom styles. This is for advanced users. If you know how to tweak your CSS cascade styling sheets, in this case, we're going to leave it as is, and we're good to go. Now I want to show you the related posts plugin in action. If I go to the site here, I've added a bunch of posts and pages. And if I refresh the page, and let's say, for example, I'm going to click on a specific post. And remember, I have it set where if the title is similar, it's going to show the related posts. So I've got three posts, post one, two, and three. And if I click on any of these, it should post and show the post one and two. So we got post one and two. If I go back here and I click on post two, it should display post one and three and one and three. So there we go. And if I click on pages, we only have page one and two. It shows page two and page two should display page one. And we can see that it works that way. When somebody actually comes to your site, they really are interested in the content. They love it. They want to know more. They're going to see the related posts and they're probably going to click on that to find out more information. So that's a great way to get people to stick on your site, to interact with your site and decrease your bounce rates and increase the stay rates. 
This really helps, especially with Google trying to rank your sites and trying to figure out, is your site a site that people actually go to and stay on? 